Welcome to part three of my craft room makeover. This week has been by far the most frustrating of the whole series I've been doing on this. On Saturday I wanted to get started and it was snowing like crazy. We had this. And I got started on Sunday sanding down the pieces and I was really enthusiastic about doing it. I got three of the pieces sanded and I got called into work so I had to drag them all in. My goal for that day was to get the bottoms, at least the bottoms, sanded and the tops of them spray painted. But that didn't work. I had to work on Monday. On Tuesday it was pouring. <laughs> I have finished sanding my stuff. Now I'm going to put my cardboard away in my shed. I'm going to show you. We've had lots of rain. This is mushy. Hopefully it dries out because I like using cardboard to paint stuff on. Taking you for a walk out to my project shed. You can see how mushy the ground is. It's kind of frozen underneath, but we've got water standing. It's just a mushy mess. So, this craft room project has been a little difficult getting everything done. I don't know if you can see the water puddles. This water's standing. It's my project shed. It's a little dark in there, but I've got a bed I want to redo for the guest bedroom. It's a little dark in here. You can see I've got all sorts of stuff. It's filled to the max. I did clean it out the other day so I could get the bed moved forward. So I could get to it. It's this right here. I'm gonna sand it down or use a wire brush and, and repaint it and the next room will be my spare bedroom. So I haven't got the whole four, four pieces done. I've still got pieces downstairs that are drying and I'm hoping to wrap this up next week. But I want to explain on, on these cabinets. They were covered with a lacquer or a shellac and I had to take them out and sand them lightly so that the paint would adhere. And then I took Zinsser primer and then I used an oil based paint. But I took all the knobs off and these were the knobs that were on it. If you can see, they're just little bitty ones. And then I took these, they were brown and I took some paint remover and I, I just kind of wiped over them and then put them on a cardboard and spray painted them black. I priced these at Menards. They were three something a piece. I got boxes and boxes of doorknobs door for a, a, like a dollar at, at the craft store and this required 12 so that would have been quite expensive. I took all the hinges and the screws off the, the doors and I laid them out and spray painted them a shiny black also. These are the hinges off the cabinet I bought at the auction and there's two of them I bought for $45 each quite quite a while ago and the screws also I've I put them all on a piece of cardboard to hold them up the the knobs I bought were from an auction I bought several boxes for like a dollar a box they were kind of slippery last time I tried painting them the paint bubbled up so I took a paint remover and just wiped them off so they weren't quite so slick and I'm going to use a cheap dollar paint and get those painted just to spruce them up The other two shelves are downstairs drying. I've got the two lower doors for this cabinet downstairs drying and I've got the top, the two shelves, and I just finished the, the two drawers, top drawers. So anyhow, you wouldn't believe what you find when you're cleaning out your craft room. I don't know if you can see this. This was a rescue we had. That's a great Dane and his feet were on the ground. And I can't believe how time has got away. This was me in my 30s. That was Christmas. <laughs> As I said earlier, these two pieces cost me, these two ca cabinet pieces, they were brown. They cost me $45 a piece and I just didn't like how dark the room was. So I painted them an almond color. I want to give you a few tricks, tips. If you don't have a drill bit, and you want to drill a pile hole, take a finishing nail and put it in your drill. 
and you can drill a pilot hole. Also, when you're sanding, palm sander, they, they come pre-cut, but they're a little bit more expensive. If you take a whole sheet, fold it in half, now I've got one already folded, done, and rip that, and then fold it in half again and rip that, and that's the perfect size for your palm sander. And you don't have to pay the expensive cost of the pre-cut ones. This is the cabinet now that it's almost finished. i got to put the doors on. In the bottom I have a bunch of wallpaper, um, contact paper, and I also have some odds and ends in there. I want to get the doors on those. But it's a nice contrast. And over here in this corner, you can see the other one. I, the drawers aren't completely dry, so I can't put the knobs on. And the top part is downstairs drying. Excuse my vacuum. Over here is that green file cabinet. I painted it cream also. I wanted all the pieces in my craft room a neutral color because with all the visual chaos of the books and the craft items, it's just kind of overwhelming. This island here is on wheels. I had it in my kitchen and we changed things out down there. There was a wicker trunk that was full of like faux fur and, and just odds and ends of material which is in the bottom. The drawer has a bunch of knitting needles in it. But what I did when I made this, let's see if I can do it one handed. It's got an extension so I can use that as a work, work base. And I'm really sorry I did not get these cabinets done. I worked like crazy to try to get them in for this week's episode. Come back next week. The projects I have to finish up this room, put, finish putting things on the walls, and get things put away don't require me being dependent on the weather. If you remember correctly, there was a sewing machine cabinet right there. That will not be coming back in. I've got another plan for that which might help some of you sewers. I think it's kind of a neat idea. Come back next week and see me.